Right, hi folks. Um, just thought I would do a wee bit of a drawn tutorial because a lot of you seem to be coming across the same sort of issues when adding tone to make things um, look realistic and to make things look like the right texture. So what I'm going to do is just basically go through the drawing as to how I would approach it um, and hopefully you'll be able to take some tips from this to improve your own drawing skills at home. So the drawing that I'm going to do today is um, the second one on the PowerPoint where it's the woman who has the fabric wrapped around her head. So how I would approach the drawing to begin with, I'd probably start with the nose and just do kind of light markings on the page as to roughly where I think that those or that part of the face should be. Okay. All I've got, all I'm doing is what I've asked you lot to have at home. So I've asked if you could have a pencil, an ordinary pencil, I've called it an HB, but really it's just an ordinary pencil for you to sketch with and some paper. So I'm just using some white paper as well. So you'll notice I'm just marking out the eyes as well, just concentrating on the shape of the eyes. And I do everything quite lightly to begin with, and I know all of you might have a rubber at home, um, and that's fine. But if you do it lightly, then it shouldn't matter too much. You shouldn't need to rub anything out because you can just go over the lines that you want to keep to make them a bit more obvious as I'm starting to do now. Okay, so now looking at the iris of the eye and thinking back to what we've been doing in class when we're doing portraiture drawing where we look at all of the detail in the eye as well as the shape. So in this eye here, there's quite a few bits of pattern, different lines and reflections I can see in it. And the beauty of working from screen is that you can zoom in on your device. So you can zoom in on your iPad when you're working at this part of the eye to make sure that you're getting all the detail in it. I'm starting to do the detail that I can see on the inside of the eye. Now this isn't tone that I'm doing just now. This is just line and shape. That's all I'm focusing in on just now. And if you like, in some essence, there's some patterns because I'm starting to look at the patterns from the lines. Okay, on that part of the eye. And then starting to fill in some other shapes that I can see around the eye. The eyelid, for example. And again, I'm going to start off by lightly doing that shape. No rubber being used by me, not yet. Okay. Just again, thinking carefully about where the marks are. Should be looking 80% of the time for observation drawn and only drawn 20% of the time. Now, I'm quite happy with the shape of that eye. I like that I've not gone straight across. If you look at the image, the eye actually angles up a wee bit towards the back and then I can start to think about the details with all the hair. So the eyelashes and the eyebrows and that's if you remember back to when we were doing our tonal drawings it should be individual lines that we're doing because the eyebrows are not tattoo shapes, they are individual hairs on the face, different lengths, different directions. And on this particular drawing, it's really quite clear where those lines are in this image, which is good. And the more you do them kind of closer together in those individual hairs, you'll create that texture from the eyebrows that we need. What I might actually do is do one side right and one side wrong, just the kind of common mistakes that you might feel that you're starting to make so that you know to correct them. So that eyebrow goes up high quite a wee bit and then it kind of would go off at the side where the cloth is. So I'm going to stop that there and I'm going to go back to the eyelashes now and looking carefully at the eyelashes, some of them come out straight from the eye. Some of them come out at an angle, especially towards the end. Some of them are longer than others. But definitely as you get towards that edge of the eye, they're starting to slope downwards. They're not heading up the way. 
If your eyelashes are starting to look like spider legs, then something's going wrong. You need to go back and have a wee look at them. Right. And then the bottom eyelashes. Again, they should have a slight curve. They're not all going in the same direction. Some will be slightly longer than others. But the more you can take your time and get them in accurately, the better that this drawing is going to look for you. So that's one side. I see I'm quite happy with that side. I'm going to do some common mistakes that would happen on the other side. So the first common mistake would be to not look at the drawing and to make, if I put a line down the middle, you'll see what's right and what's wrong. Okay, so this is the wrong side and this is the right side. Okay, um, where you put an ellipse in, but that ellipse isn't carefully looking at the image, so it's going flat across. You then might do things like put the full iris in, and if you remember when we've done portraiture in the past, that's impossible because you would need to have your eyes wide open to see the full iris. So when you're putting the full iris in, that would be as if you were terrified, shocked. But if you can see the expression on this lady's face, that's not the case here. We can't see the full iris, so that shouldn't happen. You then might think it's a good idea to put some spider leg eyelashes on it, and I really can't judge it away from that anymore. Okay, and you'll see the comparison of the two images. Eyebrows. You know this is my pet hate when we draw on these tattooed eyebrows like that and then we try shading them in to make it look like hair. Okay, if I hold that up, I think you can see the difference in the quality and the fact that I've spent a lot longer than this side. That's been very quick, not a lot of time. And that's because I'm not looking, I'm not observing. This side, I'm observing. This side, I'm making it up as I go along. Okay. So we want to make sure we're observing. Next, I'm going to just very carefully draw the shape of the wrap around the lady's face. It's very, again, lightly. We don't need to use a rubber. So again, I'm just lightly using line. And at this point, all I've used is line and shape. Let me remind you of that. Line and shape. Okay? If I remind you of all the visual elements, we've got line, shape, pattern, texture, form, tone. Colour, yes, but we're not using colour today. But all the other ones we will be using at some point. So just make sure that when you're looking at your final drawing at the end, is it successfully communicating all of those visual elements that I've just said there? And if it's not, why not? What do you need to do to fix it? So I'm looking at the wrap and a few of you have made some effort where you've maybe drawn the shape. I'm going to do the wrong side first. Where you've drawn some of the lines that we can see, which is absolutely great. You've maybe done some dots because if you look closely at the image, there is a dotted texture. Right. But then overall, what you've done is this and shaded it in. Right. Okay, so that it's looking like that. And that isn't really communicating anything to me other than scribbles. Okay, so what we want to do is looking back at our other side, we are going to use our tonal scale that we've used in the past before. So if you need help, put five boxes on your page like we've done with previous work, right? Numbering them one to five, five being the heaviest, one leaving completely light, Two, a little bit of tone. Three, a little bit more tone. Four, a little bit more tone. And five, obviously, being that darkest, right? So you've got your tonal scale down there. And you're using that as a tool to help you with the fabric. Now, absolutely draw the lines in of the obvious creases that you can see because that's going to help you when you're applying tone. There's another wee one just straight below that. And there's some more creases. So I'm going to stop there just now. And I'm going to start working.
from up here down all these sections, right? So I've drawn in my lines, but now I need to use that tonal scale. I mean, I'm thinking about texture. Rather than the scribbles where we see a lot of gaps in between, we need to have our pencil work really quite close together. Okay? So what we are going to do is starting up where near the nose is, I can see that that is a one and a two. So I'm just trying to very lightly keep him where it's a one completely white. But then where it's a two, just leaning that little bit darker. And actually what I'm doing is a bit like a cross hash texture. You've maybe done it in graphics before. Just because the texture of this fabric is like a sort of rough wool um, and just so that I'm communicating that across successfully I'm maybe kind of doing cross hash so back and forth back and forth. Now it's gradually getting a little bit darker it starts to move into a three and then it goes back to a two again and it continues as a two along for quite a wee bit. Dipping in and out of a three. And actually a one as well. You know, I get this will be a wee bit hard for you to see at the minute, but I'm just trying to do quite a good wee section so that when I lift it up, you can see the difference. When you're doing these types of drawings, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. I want you to take your time. I'd rather you sent me work that was unfinished, but the quality of it was outstanding, rather than send me work which is finished, but there's a lot of areas we need to work on. Okay. I'm now dwindling in fours and fives. Some bits are getting quite dark, but then also it jumps to three again. A lot of jumping about. And it's important to exaggerate these tones where they are darker, get darker, because otherwise it's just going to look flat as if you've shaded it in one tone. And obviously that's not the case. Here. And this is taking me quite a while, so I'm turning that at an angle here just so that I can get in a wee bit better. But if you notice already compared to the other side, this is taking me a lot longer to do. By dipping in and out of these tones, you're going to create form. So, that would mean, that if you're doing this correctly, if you're adding tone the way I'm asking you to, and the way I'm showing you just now, you're going to be creating form. So, you're going to make it look three-dimensional. You're going to have obvious areas of light and dark. And for the way you use the pencil, you're going to communicate texture, which means that you will have successfully managed to communicate all of the visual elements that I'm looking from you today. Right, 
I'm not going to do the full texture. I'll maybe do one more wee bit and then I'm going to show you the skin and then I'll hold it up closer so that you can see the effect of that overall that that's having on the drawing compared to the other side. interruption there it's my youngest she wants her moment of fame as well on the screen right now the skin right so the skin so if I hold that up close I'm hoping you're starting to see the texture of that wrap better than what it was before and obviously you would continue that round the whole of the mask but then where it meets the skin the skin you'll notice on this model here is particularly smooth and the darkest areas are round about the nose and the eyes this time instead of cross hatching your pencil work you just want to lightly build it up and blend it with gentle pencil marks on the page. taking your time don't lose the shape of your eye and again not just shading the full thing in one tone because that will just make it as flat as if you didn't have any tone on it whatsoever right so it's about getting that balance and that confidence to go dark where it's dark and taking the pencil off where it's lighter yeah now although the white part of the eye is white if you look at the image there are also areas of it that are a wee bit darker. And so just gently with your pencil, just be using the shape of the eye, going in the direction of the curve, and just gently putting on some tone on the white areas to make that part of the eye look 3D as well. Same part with the tear duct. In particular, it's quite dark at the top of the eye, so don't be scared to go that bit darker up there to really get that idea across of dark tone. And some more on the other side. And this shouldn't take five minutes to do. Take breaks. Don't need to do it all in one sitting. You might find that drawing it out is all you want to do for one day. Or you might focus in on doing um, the fabric one day. But there's a reason these drawings have been provided as a drawing a week. Okay, I'm not expecting them done in a day. You probably find that if you do them in a day, yeah, there's bits that will be successful. But there will be areas that you, you know, if you were in class, I'd be asking you to go back and have a wee look about. And see how you can make that bit better. And then just try to keep those obvious reflections at the top of the eye in. Really just trying to bring this eye to life. At this point, actually, when you add tone, that's when you find whether your shapes are actually right or not. And I'm looking at my drawing here and going, do you know what? I think that fabric could do with coming in a wee bit. So because I've drawn nice and lightly, I'm now not afraid to go back and fix that and bring that fabric in a wee bit.
Now, I know a lot of you are tempted to get that finger on top of the pencil work and blend it, and please don't do that, okay? Use the media to blend, as in your light tones and dark tones with the pencil. Please don't start rubbing your finger over the top, because all that's going to do is, one, make it messy, and two, it's going to flatten all those lovely areas where you've had the confidence to go quite dark, okay? And keep the pencil off the paper. So I urge you to fight the need to want to do that. Not long left on this side. And it's on the skin it's about the subtle changes in tone it's not quite as drastic as on the fabric you need to lean really quite light to get that pencil work close together I'm quite happy with that just now. So if I bring that in, hopefully you can see the progress from side A to side B. I'm obviously looking for the B side, not the A side. Okay, so I hope that helps you all at home. All right, thanks, bye.